Well, uh, I would like to thank you very much for the opportunity to be here. The other uh, side of the world for me. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit uh, of what we have been done in Brazil. And I come from the university, but I, I worked for the Environmental Protection Agency of Sao Paulo for many years. So when I quit, I decided to try to link academia with real action. So I'm going to show what I have been done so far. Uh, okay, immersion pollutants, it's very nice because um, she uh, said a lot about it, so it's easy to, to, to go forward. Uh, but I think there is some, something that you need to know. I think it's because of the, chemist, the chemists that we have the immersion contaminants. Because we, this is not new. We have been drinking all that stuff for years and years. But this is just because the chemists now, they are able to analyze it. And they are always ahead of us biologists. Uh, and, and, sorry. and then uh, now we are able to detect nanograms, picograms. And I have a friend uh, that said to me that if there is only a molecule in, the drink, in a glass of water, it's possible to analyze. So it's going to become very, very difficult to manage all that information. Well, I'm going to uh, jump ahead a little bit. Uh, I had a project in endocrine disruptors, and I'm going to show a little bit later. But now uh, we decided to move forward to pesticides. And pesticides are also uh, can be considered immersion contaminants, some of them, and endocrine disruptors. And uh, Brazil is number one in the use of pesticides. It's amazing. We have a lot of pesticides in place. It's 380 pesticides. And I'm going to show what we have in monitoring right now. OK, this is uh, uh, when we started. We decided to see what we have in terms of papers and information on pesticides in Brazil. And it was amazing. We, we, almost don't have any information. Just in four states we found information. Uh, only they look at for 43 um, pesticides among the, three uh, the t 380 that are um, uh, in place in Brazil, and they found 34. Those are the ones that uh, there is in the literature. And you can see there is a variation, a, a big range of, uh, of um, concentration, and we only regulate the ones that they are here in those dot, in this uh, black stars here. So it's very hard to interpret the data, and also what amazed me, it was we don't know what's going on in, in Brazil in terms of the country. Because everybody, they always have those basic um, uh, monitoring, which is fine, but we need to know about it. So, uh, we decided to, to, to move a little bit f uh, ahead and we uh, published this paper recently where we validated, where we, we implemented a method to analyze pesticides in water in nanograms per liter. We want to know if the pesticides were there. Uh, this is what we found. We start, this is just the beginning of our work. Uh, from the 19 um, pesticides we analyzed, we found 15. Those are the pesticides we analyzed for, and those are different rivers. So you can see they are all there. They are in nanograms per liter, but they are in almost all the rivers we analyze it. This is just a preliminary data that we have. Well, we also went to the drinking water just to take a look, and we found all the, almost a lot of them in, in the drinking water as well. Uh, and atrazine is in everywhere we look for. And I want to point out this blue line here. This is groundwater, very deep, and, and, and this is drinking water and comes from groundwater. So atrazine probably is going to be in all the wells in Brazil because of the huge use of herbicides. So, well, uh, then with that numbers, we need to, 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 to interpret that, right? We know they are there. So 
this is what we, we have a group in Brazil. We are doing, uh, we are trying to calculate water quality criteria for the different uses of water. And this is hard because everybody goes to the uh, WHO guidelines and they say, well, I don't find it for the carbendazine or whatever. I don't know. And then it's very hard. We don't know what to do. So this is what I like the most to do. So uh, I studied a lot and learned a lot during all those years. And now we came up with a book that I, uh, I'm going to give to UNESCO library that we brought. This is a book trying to explain to people that you can calculate your own criteria if you have data. And for pesticides, we have all the data. The industry uh, provides that data. So in this book, we are showing how to calculate, we are talking about other issues, and also chemical analysis and so far. So it's available at the internet as well, but unfortunately it's in Portuguese. But we have a document that is previously, it was previously published, uh, the same one that I'm showing here. We, we, we did a, a meeting in Brazil, I invited several people from all around the world and I said, well, imagine that you are in heaven and you can do, what do you, do you recommend for us to, to how we should do this derivation or uh, uh, protocol for derivation of water criteria? And we uh, came up with this uh, criteria for aquatic life protection. This is published, also available in English and in Portuguese at this web page. And we have also the same document for drinking water. So you are welcome to, to take a look. I think it's very, it's very interesting to see. It's not so difficult to, to come up with the criteria. Um, so our conclusions, uh, we conclude that Data on pesticides in the water in Brazil are very scarce. I didn't show about drinking water, but this is really bad. We almost don't have any information. Although it's in the law, and it's, but it's not good, the information. Uh, several non-regulated pesticides, including the ones suspected to have endocrine disruptors, were found in fresh water and drinking water. What I'm trying to say is that uh, some of our, the pesticides are at the safe levels, but depending on how they will be, you know, the more information comes up, maybe the values will be lower, and then the water that was considered potable is not going to be considered anymore. This is one thing that we need to, to start thinking because this is changing all the time. So it's hard to, to continue with the, the old paradigm. We need more data to identify the priority ones and then, uh, and then we need an effort to calculate the water quality criteria for the different uses of water and then we can interpret the data that we have and then maybe think about regulating them. I think this is a, it's a, 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 a important process. Okay, then endocrine disruptors, uh, very brief. This was a, a, a project we did, uh, a project we did in the past, 2002 to 2012. Um, we analyzed uh, several endocrine disruptors uh, compounds and other compounds, and also we include caffeine, and this is very important for the rest of my presentation. Uh, we also included a bioassay. Some bioassays are very, very sensitive and this one it's it's uh, it's a little bit in a specific but you can detect uh, endocrine disruptors such as um, ee2 or e2 it's it's yeast that has inside the the estrogen receptor human estrogen receptor inside so this is a bioassay that is easy to do and now the environmental protection agency in in sao paulo they are monitoring the water with this bioassay so why i'm saying i like that because you know this in blue those are the the the, the sites we analyze it they some are bad, uh, that bad rivers, other are better. But what I want to show is that if we calculate based on the measurements of the chemicals, we calculate how much of endocrine disruptor activity we would expect, you are going to see this in blue, right? But then when we use the bioassay, we saw much more. So there are Clearly, there is a lot of other compounds or synergistic uh, effects that are causing this. So, it, uh, the person that developed the assay, we had the, the visitor in Brazil, and she was amazed. She said, I never thought we would see in a river the amounts that we see in general for effluents. Okay. Uh, and then, why I'm saying caffeine could be 
uh, something that could help us. Uh, caffeine. Uh, caffeine is known to be an indicator of sewage in the water. Uh, instead of coliforms, they are alive, they can die. Caffeine is there all the time. So I think it's, it's something we could include in our monitoring thinking. Caffeine, uh, and, and caffeine is being monitored in several rivers around the world. And what amazes us in Brazil is that the amounts that we are finding in some of our rivers, it's really it's really a lot. It's 40 micrograms per liter in the water. Usually, uh, I heard that in Europe, they have around 0.2 micrograms uh, per liter. So this is very easy to discriminate and see the status of your water uh, using caffeine. Okay. Uh, then we started, we tried to do some correlations and PCA analysis, and we found that caffeine was the was uh, at some point correlating with the estrogenic activity. So we published that paper showing that maybe caffeine could be used as an indicator. It's not a direct indi indicator, but this could help us try to track what are the, 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 the hot spots that we need to work a little bit more, right? Uh, okay, and caffeine analysis is cheaper than the others. We still need some equipment, but it's it's different from the ones that we need for the EE2 and so far. It's much more expensive and more difficult. So, but you, you can even do in GCMS, which is really it's more common. Uh, and it, this uh, we calculated also, uh, how it's very simple to analyze and it's n the cost is not so high, okay? If you were not very strict about how much you want, to, the, the, how much you want for limit of detection. So we are seriously thinking of including caffeine in our monitoring programs. We, are, we have lots of data now, and we are going to show in the future, I hope, to you in publications. Okay, so uh, conclusions. The majority of the surface water samples presented endocrine disruptors and other emergent contaminants. Human sewage is the main source of contamination. Conventional treatment is not able to remove emergent contaminants. Bioassays such as bleeds and others can be important uh, analysis to complement chemical analysis. And caffeine can be useful to trace sewage contaminations in surface water. So, when, this is just a small story, when we started to publish that data, okay, I, I will be very fast. Uh, the companies became, the, the sanitation companies became very, very mad at us. They didn't want to, to discuss that. And I, 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 I can understand that because uh, there is a reason, uh, sorry. Uh, there are so many issues that we need to deal with in Brazil. Imagine we have, this is just, this happened just in June 2015. Right. So we have that situation in Brazil. No water, lots of microcystins. And, and on the top of that, they need to worry about this other emerging contaminants. But this is going on. There is this report. There is even a regulatory proposal for EE2 that the amount is really minimal. Uh, we also uh, showed some um, um, endocrine disruptor in, in vivo in rats in our drinking water. So then the company said, well, environment, uh, emerging contaminants will be included in our agenda. And this is how uh, now we are doing a lot of partnerships with the universities and uh, to develop treatment technologies and also to develop uh, and also to monitor. So I think this is, sorry. Uh, so I think this is the big challenge. We need to solve the old problems and the new ones at the same time. And I, I understand the problem with Africa and all the countries, this is, but this is it. We cannot just, you know, don't see it. Uh, and we need to jump ahead, and, sorry. Uh, to jump ahead and implement uh, the best available technology. Monitoring data is needed. We need to include chemical indicators of low cost, maybe caffeine and some bioassays could be used. So I think a worldwide effort of academia, government and non-government organizations is needed to, de to, to develop affordable treatment and monitoring technologies to all nations to protect the one of the most valuable resources in the world, that is the water, okay? So thank you very much. So now we can we can accept just only one question. Okay. Anyone? Yeah. Sorry. Oh yeah. Thank you.
thank you very much. Very interesting uh, lecture. Um, uh, my question is, uh, is the uh, problem of pesticides due to the increase of the uh, quantity per hectare per year or the variety of pesticide and is it related to the biofuel because you said it's increasing is it related to the biofuel uh, agriculture now yeah exactly in sao paulo we are 40 percent of the alcohol production in brazil which is the sustainable energy is produced there and that's why we have so many so many herbicides atrazine simosines all those compounds come from that so it's really related to the agriculture for sure and it's increasing. So, thank uh, you very much. Thank you very much.